everybody, welcome back to the show. Well, you know we love the Canucks here on Urban Rush, and uh, well, our next guest just gives us an excuse to talk about yeah, them. Yeah, and boy, does he love his job. Ian Walker, of course, writes for the Vancouver Sun, uh, and he covers our Vancouver Canucks. How are you, man? Hey, everyone. So you didn't get no road trip to New York City for you? No, I get to Edmonton. Calgary. Yes. <laughs> if only Winnipeg were still in the yeah, league. Yeah, I know. I'd be like set. It was the same in the CFL question. when I covered the CFL. Now, I Ian, got how, Hamilton. How long have you been writing uh, this beat for the Canucks for now? Uh, this will be four months. Four months. Now, yes. to come on board when the Canucks are on a tear like yeah, they, have they ever been on a tear well, like this before? I keep getting reminded by my colleagues. Because Elliot you're Pat. like, yeah, yeah. they're yeah. all the time. I don't know what any differently is. <laughs> just the way it is. I love covering the winner. <laughs> yeah. Coincidence? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Elliot Papp, who was kind enough to trade beats with me in the summer, yeah. um, he had been covering the league, uh, the Canucks in the league for 23 years, yeah. and they'd never been on a run like this. So for him <laughs> to come, and I just hope he doesn't want his beat back in June. Does this does it make it harder though, as a as a writer? To is it easier, harder? Does it make any difference to you? Because you have a very different style. As yeah, well. for me, it's you know I think for the beat guys, it, it, it makes it makes it a little bit more enjoyable to go to the rink every day when things are going well. Obviously, yeah. you know, and I think telling stories. Um, you can make it interesting to the, for the players, good or bad. Yeah. I think that's up to the journalists The guys, themselves. I would imagine, are a little bit more uh, playful when it comes to telling yeah. stories when they are on a winning streak. Yeah, and, and I think that comes from just the good vibe around the room, around the rink. Um, I come from a great, you know, background in terms of the Giants, where they were on such a run. So yeah. I mean, you are I'm, a good luck charm. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to Maybe just stay here and hide behind our. Maybe couch I should be see. on the road more. <laughs> like to New York he's, or something. Yeah. He says looking for his boss. Do you think somewhere? Luongo would have done the poetry reading series uh, at a time where they weren't winning so much? Well, I think he has a really good relationship with James Duffy from TSN, and yeah. they've done things in the past. And I had uh, talked with James about that, and, and uh, he said he was coming to town and was hoping to do something with Luongo, but wouldn't tell me why. And uh, when I read them, or saw them, yeah. uh, a couple of months later, oh, I was funny. just like, I thought it was hilarious. Brilliant. Well, and you were kind enough to send us the link to the, uh, the Green Man one, the which one we that never, hadn't, the, I hadn't seen before. Yeah, it hit the cutting room floor, I guess. Word is How TSN is thought it was part? a little bit too uh, a little bit too much. Yeah. yeah, it was the part about the package and the grinding of the package. So reenacting it, it is great. <laughs> yeah. Wow, it's, you guys are cutting edge. Well, you, you have me on. I mean, obviously, uh, you know, you're here because we're we're big fans, and and I, I think uh, of me or the Canucks. Yeah, of you. Oh of, wow, of the way that you write because. You, you take a perspective that I think is really different, first of all, and, and but the guys that you like to cover as well, I mean, you really are sort of, you have an affection for these guys that are that are the workmen. You know, they're the third, fourth liners. These guys go in, and, and they have tough jobs sometimes. Well, I really appreciate what, you know, those guys do, because they work hard. And, and all I can contribute my success in my career is, the only thing I've controlled is how hard I work. Yeah. And, you know, I'm sure there's far more talented writers out there that aren't, at the Vancouver Sun, but um, I, so I really am drawn to those guys because I, I feel that we have a connection, and they are the guys that don't aren't in the spotlight, yeah. so they want to talk, well, and they're like, "Why are you talking to me?" And then they realize that you're really interested in what they have to say. Yeah. Right. It gives you some of the best stuff. You had a beautiful article, uh, Bolduc, after he uh, his dad. scored his first goal yeah. and he dedicated the puck to his dad. And, and the only reason I knew about that was earlier in the year. I think it's October is Hockey for Cancer Month, yeah. and I had learned talking to Bolduc about it because he was out with a high ankle sprain, and he told me that you know this is nothing. You know, three years ago I lost my dad. And it stuck with me. And I was like, well, you know what? And then I saw he scored his first goal. And I was watching the game at home with my wife. And I was telling her, oh, he lost his dad three years ago. And I'm sure. And so when I saw him when he came back in town, I said, the first thing I asked him, I said, listen, who's the first person you oh, thought of? Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> and, he, and he knew that he, I had known and told me the story. And I thought, yeah, that's great. And we yeah. talked about his family and his aunt who helped get them through that difficult time. And it turns yeah. into a really great story by just doing a little bit extra. Well, and it's fun to see these guys because you read the sports pages and, and you read the scores and you read the details of the game and everything. But getting to know these guys is, as people, you know, they, they've had really... Uh, in a lot of ways, tough lives. You know, they have to move away from home really young. And I've always wanted to start a bumper sticker: "Athletes are people too." Yeah, <laughs> you know, you because forget. you do forget. You know, especially when they go on the road. And yeah. we talked about this in the past. And they have families and yeah. lives. And you know, things aren't always going smoothly. And, and now you've got away. a guy in their face asking them about you yeah. know last night's goal. Well, and the other great thing is, uh, I think sometimes you forget about. You know, it's really easy to hate the opposition. And Christopher Steed came to town uh, with. Uh, <laughs> 
uh, the Maple Leafs and uh, formerly Chicago. So, you know, someone that right, I had a on. lot of antipathy for, like yeah. not a popular guy, but you did your Q&A with him. Uh, and it was fascinating. Like, it's just interesting to see these guys. And you, your research is meticulous. Well, and, and I You're got, like the Nardwar of sports. You don't even go there because <laughs> I just put this on Twitter because someone just sent an email or a Twitter saying, you know, this is really good. You're a really great interviewer. And I said, my two biggest influences in life for interviewing are Peter Zosky and Nardwar. Are you yeah. kidding me? Nardwar, Nardi's like when I was like a man. kid, I was like, oh, he pulled this stuff out for Snoop, and Snoop would be like, oh my God, yeah. I can't believe that. And you know, and I was like, that's what I want to do to people. I want them to realize. That must be great getting that reaction from someone who is interviewed almost on a daily yeah, basis. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and I was so stoked last night because Nardwar wrote me back. And I, <laughs> I thought it was like, yeah, this just made my day. <laughs> my Nardwar. Hero, my I know. I was like, I can't believe it. Okay, but we have to talk about um, the Canucks uh, and other teams and, and these dresses that uh, you've discovered. Oh, I forgot about the dresses. Uh, yeah. Tell us a little bit about this closing line. Um, the Little Black Jersey Company. Mm -hmm. Every girl needs one in their closet. This and, girl from uh, Ontario? Yeah, Hamilton. Her la name is Lise Munzee. <laughs> and she's that going for her hot. PhD in really? like sciences or something, yeah. And she's like, a, yeah, she's a super, super smart, intelligent woman. But uh, she said she needed some extracurricular activities to take her mind off schooling. So and so she started her. cutting up jerseys. <laughs> and reworking them into dresses. And, and whatever the, the jersey is makes them into a dress. Obviously, they're a little larger, so she can work with them. Yeah. But she was a big Toronto Maple Leafs fan. So the first one she cut up was a Bruins. Because she didn't have <laughs> in case it didn't That's work. Funny. Start yeah. the yeah, exactly. <laughs> but she went to, and she wore this dress, this dress here, this is Lee's. She wore this dress to Maple Leaf Gardens, and I guess 80% of the um, response she got was very positive. Right. Really and everyone else was like, that's sacrilege. Yeah, you can't cut uh, up a yeah, jersey. Yeah, so uh, I did this story, and then they ended up, um, some people from here got in touch with her, and they're doing Canuck ones. And Why so not? That was a, the, the first one was a commission for a Vancouver Canucks yeah. fan. Yeah. So when I first saw these pictures, because I looked at these pictures in your awesome. email that you sent us before I, I read what you wrote, and I thought these were the cheerleading outfits. Because <laughs> oh. they have the cheerleaders yes. now, and I thought that's what, what they were. Well, Vancouver doesn't yet. I hope We don't have them yeah, yet. I was like going to ask how you feel about cheerleaders <laughs> How do you NHL feel ranks? about the NHL cheerleaders, Ian? <laughs> oh. um, Come on. They're nice honest. to look at. Yes. <laughs> but I don't think they're needed in this market. I think it does it down yeah. and um, one of the best responses I got was the Edmonton Oilers who do have cheerleaders um, I asked a couple of their players and they offered a no comment yeah so that to me says something right yeah there. to me that says well they're not gonna say anything badly about the guy yeah. who pays their checks right but they're probably not too I don't think it belongs yeah. in hockey I yeah. mean cheerleaders so, are great on the football field but in hockey yeah, it just, just seems weird uh, yeah. tonight the boys in, girls in New York playing <laughs> the Rangers uh, this road trip I mean they just seem to be becoming and I don't want to curse them but they're becoming a team that even when they don't play that great, they seem to be able to fight through it now. Well, and that's very unusual. That's <laughs> happened, history. Well, it's it's happened a few times, you know, and um, I, I think tonight will be a real true test. You know, they play Washington tomorrow. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so these are two big back-to-back -back games. Right. Uh, against two teams that are, are potential playoff yeah. contenders. And uh, where last night in uh, New York, uh, that just wasn't the case. And uh, I think... You're seeing more now that other players are stepping up when other team when other players aren't having good nights. Yeah. And the, the one guy I can't say enough about is Ryan Kessler, who's oh, yeah. he's amazing. He's you been know? amazing this year. Yeah. And Tanner Glass too, man. Like Tanner's that guy is just he's just he's that guy on the team. You know, people seem to rally around him a little bit, and he can have an influence on a game in a very small number of minutes. Well, and and he is really really someone who his teammates appreciate. Yeah. Someone who goes unheralded. And then he's the guy who's going to stick up for a fight Boy, against a six foot. That dude oh, the other dude! Day. And, and, <laughs> and Tanner's not a big guy. Like Tanner's not someone you'd want to mess with, you yeah. or I. Yeah. But I mean, when you're <laughs> Maybe six, together, yeah. You know? <laughs> but when you're six foot five and two hundred fifty pounds, like uh, you know Steve McIntyre of the Edmonton Oilers, yeah. or George Peros, yeah. and and you know this guy's going out there knowing that if things go rough, he's I gonna am fight that yeah, giant. You know, and if it happens, it might happen again tonight, uh -huh. or I have to do it again tomorrow. So yeah, I mean, Tanner is one of those unheralded guys that probably means more to the guys in the room right. than outside. Yeah. But uh, like as something else play. I passed along, the, the Scrabble. Tanner is really endearing himself to people outside. He's a big Be Scrabble player. He's playing the Scrabble dude. Yeah, I'd pass it to Bulis, the <laughs> bloggers. You like that? <laughs> I just want to see when it all gets set up and the finish of the story. Ian, thank you. Thank man. you so hey, much, you. Ian. Of course, you can uh, the read Ian in the Vancouver Sun. Always nice to see you. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. We're going to take a break.